Tatsavitulvareyam Vargo deva shyati mai Diyo yona prachodaya Ambur puvasvaha Tatsavitulvareyam Vargo deva shyati mai Diyo yona prachodaya Ambur puvasvaha Satsavitur Vareyam Vargo Deva Shyati Mai Diyo Yona Prachodaya Diyo Yona Prachodaya Diyo Yona Prachodaya Ladies and gentlemen, let me invite David Grimes. All yours, David. Thank you. I'm now going to share the screen and put my screen on for you. Yeah. And hopefully that will work out well. Brilliant. Can we have your volume slightly higher, David? If I talk like I'm talking now, will that be all right? I can hear you. I don't know if everyone else. Is that okay? Good to me. Okay. I'll, I'll start now. Yes. And I hope it is loud enough. Now, I'm going to be talking on the importance of Vitamin Do you D. Do probably want to make the screen bigger? Like make it full screen on your PowerPoint? You can do a full screen on your PowerPoint. That's okay, one moment. Okay. Right, well I'll start now. I'm going to be talking about the importance of vitamin D especially at the present time of the pandemic of COVID-19. And this is where I start. I was at Manchester University, sorry, from 1961 to 66, consulted in Blackburn until 2013, and I've done a lot of research into vitamin D during the past 30 years. And I've published some books on the subject, as you can see. This is one of the things that I feel very angry about. This was the Muslim cemetery in Bradford on November the 18th, 2020. And it is terrible to see that scene. Absolutely terrible. All those people have died and they've died too young, too soon. And it has been awful. I fit, care more about that than anything during this pandemic. Let me share a bit more with you. Here we are. May the 16th, half of pregnant patients in hospital with virus are BAME. You know the expression BAME, I hope. Black African and, and um, Asian, black African and Asian minority ethnic groups. So I'll use the word BAME if you don't mind. Half of pregnant patients with the virus are BAME. September the 21st, Vain Britain still lack protection from COVID, says doctor's chief. Black people are almost twice as likely to die from COVID-19 as white people. Find study commissioned by Sadiq Khan. Sadiq Khan is the mayor of London. 
November the 13th, black and Asian people at greater risk of getting virus. The finding is based on 50 studies involving medical records of nearly 19 million patients. And they did, the, all those studies missed the vital point. <clears throat> Health inequalities, a major factor in high BAME COVID cases. Well, okay, this was just a couple of weeks ago, January the 29th. Study reveals depth of BAME health inequality in England. It's still happening. And here we have, from my local newspaper, a hospital chaplain and imam has shared the moment he conducted the final rites on a woman suffering from COVID who had given birth to her fifth child days before. This is terrible. This was a young woman, just 44, gave birth to a fifth child, and a few days later, she died from COVID-19. It should never have happened. Can you imagine the poor husband? Well, the poor woman, she's dead. But the poor husband with five young children to look after. Think of the five young children. They've got no mother. And people do not realize why it's happening. A Dr. Arif Dasu, who works at a GP surgery very close to where I live, a socially deprived area near the city center, he says the problem boils down to lack of funding, engagement and insight on behalf, on the part of the government and services. He's not blaming medicine at all. He's not blaming the fact he didn't do anything to stop the death. He's blaming the government and it's wrong to do so. He should know more about it than the government. Something else, two days ago on Sunday in the Sunday newspaper, The Observer, Worse experiences of maternity care and the fact black and Asian pregnant women are far more likely to be admitted to hospital with COVID-19. They're having another inquiry. We've had umpteen inquiries into this sort of subject, particularly urgent in light of how existing inequalities have been exacerbated by COVID-19. Black and Asian women, pregnant women are eight times more likely, sorry, and Asian women four times more likely to be admitted to hospital with COVID-19 than white women. This is terrible. Racial stereotypes, unsafe antenatal conversations. But what we can see is the appalling statistic that Pakistani women are more likely to have a premature or neonatal death in the UK compared to their country of origin. That is terrible. Why should a Pakistani woman have a better outcome from pregnancy in Pakistan than in the UK? It is terrible. I keep saying this. I'm very annoyed about it. I'm very angry about it. Let's look at that. We're going to look here on the left at some countries in Europe and on the right in some countries outside Europe, in Africa and Asia. And these are deaths per million population. USA, 1,430. India, 112. UK, 1,651. Indonesia, 115. 10 times more. Well, 10 times more people are dying from COVID-19 head of population in U USA and in UK than in India and Indonesia. We see again, Spain, Poland, Belgium, Switzerland, France, Italy, Sweden, all more than a thousand deaths per million. If we look at India, Indonesia, Iraq, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Malaysia, look at Nigeria, eight deaths per million. Uganda, seven deaths per million. Singapore, five deaths per million. United Kingdom, 1,651 deaths per million. What's gone wrong in the UK? Well, I'll tell you what's gone wrong. Singapore is on the equator. The UK is nearer, the, nearer to the North Pole than the equator. This is not medicine. This is geography. The problem with the medicine, it is a failure to understand the geography. It's a failure of people to understand the geography. 
Look at those numbers. Take them in. UK, 1,651. Uganda, 7. Singapore, 5. It's all about latitude, where we live. This is, as you recognize, the United States. And this is where vitamin D is produced in April. There isn't any in the northern part, or it's just starting off in the northern part of the United States. But as we go to the southern parts of the United States, down to Mexico, Florida, we've got loads of vitamin D produced in, 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 during the month of April. So the closer to the equator, the more vitamin D. The far, further towards the North Pole, the less the vitamin D. That's the secret of it all. I'll just show you, I'm going to come out to this for a moment, if I can. I can't, doesn't matter. Hear about, here's England, the British Isles. Now, this is sunshine, believe it or not. Look at the northwest of Scotland. Less than 20 hours of sun in January in a month. Whereas we go to the southeast of England, London to the southeast, the coast, you get lots of sun. But as we move north, we get less and less sun and we get more and more in the south. Now then, this is a street in England, in the northwest of England, in the industrial areas close to where I live. Now, this photograph I took 30 years ago. The difference today is there will be many more cars there. But this is what, this is where the poor people of England live. And a lot of the South Asian people in England, this is where they come to live. It's not very pleasant and it rains a lot. As you can see, it's a rainy, wet day. Now, on the other hand, this is my garden, this is where I live. It's not rainy, it's a nice sunny day, but I have a garden, lots of plants in it, chairs. I can sit outside in the sun. People living here, they can't sit out in the sun. There's nowhere to sit. There's no garden. There's just that dreadful pavement area. Now these houses are being demolished and new houses being built. But nevertheless, I want to point out the difference between the social geography. Play houses with no gardens and houses like mine with gardens. Now, I say a lot of South Asian people live in houses like that, but not exclusively. But one thing is the doctors will not live in houses like that. The Asian doctors will live in a house like this. In fact, the house you see over behind me, behind the tree there, and the two houses, there you can see, they're both occupied by doctors, Asian doctors. Now look at this. <clears throat> this shows you 24 doctors, working doctors, who died from COVID-19 in the early part of this year. 24 of them. Now they were all BAME. There were actually 23 there. 24 doctors died from COVID-19. 23 of them were from Africa or Asian ethnicity. And there they are, 23 of them, young doctors. It was terrible. One of the 24 was white, 24, sorry, 23 of the 24 were um, ethnic African or Asian. It is terrible. Nobody bothered about that except me. I think I'm the only person in the UK who bothers about the deaths of the Bain people, the Asian African people. Here we have it. This is between six weeks, March the 24th to May the 22nd. 24 deaths, 23 Bain. The chance was one in 10 billion, that being a chance finding. He said, oh, the reason why the Asian ethnic people and black people are dying is because the poor. Well, I'm afraid we're talking here about doctors. These doctors were not poor. They were not socioeconomically disadvantaged. But if anybody bothered to test, they would all have been seriously vitamin D deficient. 
let's look at some more doctors. I concentrate on doctors to point out that this is nothing to do with poverty. Doctors are very well paid. So these are the deaths of 25 doctors reported in the British Medical Journal. Of the 25, um, 12 were white, age range between 84 and 107. The average age of death of the white doctors was 91. The previous slide, by the way, looked at working doctors. This looks at doctors of all ages. The white doctors average age of death 91. The 13 BAME doctors age range 46 to 79. The average age was 62. The BAME doctors died 30 years younger than the white doctors. This was nothing to do with pollen, this was nothing to do with racism, it was nothing to do with poverty. This was all about vitamin D deficiency. Let's look at vitamin D deficiency. I'll show you how bad it is in, um, in the northwest of England. This is research I did a number of years ago, and it looked at 1,574 South Asian ethnic people. Now, the orange area across the middle, that shows what the normal blood level is. And my, my blood vitamin D level is here, 60 nanograms per milk. Mine is at the top end. I take a vitamin D supplement, have done for 30 years. My blood level's right at the top of the ideal range. There are, out of 1,574, there are four people here who fall into that range. Four out of that number. 30 is the sort of the safe limit during the COVID-19 epidemic. If your blood level is below the, above 30, then you don't die. You don't become seriously ill. If your blood level is below 30, you've got a risk of significant illness. If it's below 10, you've got a very high risk of death. Very high indeed. The level of illness is related to the blood level of vitamin D. Now, the average vitamin D in this group, each vertical line, black line, represents one person. There are 1,574 vertical lines. This is the halfway point. Half of them had a blood vitamin D level less than nine. Very seriously vitamin D deficient. Most of them had a level less than 20. Very few above the age of 30. It is so common. Anybody who, any South Asian ethnic person or black African person who lives in the United Kingdom can expect to be vitamin D deficient. Seriously deficient. This is the reality. If you look at white people in Blackburn, it was better. The average was 18, not nine. It was 818 people here. A few more came into the ideal range, but most of them were still at risk of significant illness. And a lot of them were at risk of intensive care need and death, which is a very, very common problem. And people are blind to it. It is just not understood. This doctor here is Professor Parag Singhal, who works in the south of England. He and I have been working very closely together during the, the course of this pandemic. I was talking to him on the phone just a few minutes ago. And these are the doctors dying, working doctors dying from COVID-19. I've already looked at them, 23 BAME doctors. And the, the, the pandemic only started off really on about the 16th, 19th of um, March. We noticed these people were dying. I collected the data and Parag Singhal, then he is chairman, secretary of the British Association of Physicians of Indian origin. He had all the emails and those of Nigerian origin. He could contact all these groups and he did do. And this black arrow shows the day he sent a text to all these um, BAME doctors throughout the country, telling them they're at the risk of dying from COVID-19. They must take vitamin D. 
and another friend of ours, the three together, uh, Professor David Anderson, he provided the vitamin D from Italy, where he lives. So they all got the vitamin D there. And the death stopped. The next death of a Bain working doctor was in November. And there's another one two weeks ago. It stopped completely here. And this was due to the intervention of the, uh, Professor Parag Singhal telling them all to take vitamin D. This is what it's all about. Vitamin D, the sun. Now, this is a bit of chemistry. I don't want to turn you off. This is the chemical structure of a substance called 7-dehydrocholesterol or 7-DHC. This is an oil. It's like cholesterol. It's an oil and this oil is made in the skin. When we have an oily skin, our skin is oily because of this oil. The point is, the sun acts on the skin, shines on the skin, and it, it alters this molecule. It breaks this bond, as it says. It alters the structure of the molecule, and it turns this into vitamin D. It's a sort of as simple as that. And it's been going on in nature for one and a half billion years years, a long, long time, the vitamin D has been produced in this way, not in human skin, but in other ways, which I'll show you. So this is simple. Our skin produces this oil, and we have a nice oily skin, the sun shines on it, and hey presto, we've got loads of vitamin D. Now, this is where people get a lot of vitamin D. We're packed onto the beach in the summer, getting a lot of sun, and building up their vitamin D. They can actually get too much sun in one day and they can get sunburn, which is very unpleasant. So it doesn't have to be done that way. We don't have to crowd onto the beach, but people like going to the beach, like going on the sand. I don't know why, but they do. But it doesn't have to be like that. And here is a sort of hero of mine. This is a semi-vagrant man who I saw when I was in Austria in a city called Linz. And here he is, semi-vagrant, but middle of the day, he takes his shirt off, doesn't wear uh, socks because he probably can't afford them. He takes his shirt off, puts down his carrier bag of his drink and his sandwiches, and he sits absorbing the sun. That is fantastic. He will have an excellent vitamin D level. But not many people do that. See, most people are working during the day and during working hours, we don't get any sun. Now this man doesn't work. That's why he's able to stay out in the sun and do well. This is what happened in the United Kingdom um, before about 1960. It was realized that children did not get enough sun. The main reason was very serious atmospheric pollution, such as today is being experienced in for example, Delhi. And so children couldn't get any vitamin D from the sun. So they had to stand around in the knickers and get artificial sunlight from an ultraviolet lamp. Very famous photograph. I think I was involved in that as well when I was a very small boy. Went out of fashion. Now here we return to the sea. And this is called plankton. These are the primitive life forms in the sea, and they've been there for one and a half billion years. And they also make the oil, and the sun converts the oil in the plankton into vitamin D. The next thing that happens is the fish eat the plankton, and then we eat the fish. And so we can eat the fish, and in fish we get vitamin D, which comes from plankton. Fish cannot produce vitamin D, you can only eat it in the form of plankton. And here we are. I remember seeing a man in the hospital a number of years ago, and he had some aches and pains. And I thought, I bet he's short of vitamin D, seriously short of vitamin D. And um, I checked his blood vitamin D level, and he was as good as mine, I couldn't believe it. 
So I asked him, I said, why have you got so much vitamin D in your body? Did you take vitamin D? No, he said, never heard of it. I said, I said you, don't, you don't go out in the sun? No, don't go out in the sun. I said, do you eat a lot of fish? Oh, yes, I, I eat fish every meal, he said. I eat fish three times a day. I said, what fish? He said, I eat Bangladeshi fish. And where do you get it from? I said, I get it from Tesco. And so here we are, Bangladeshi freshwater fish, and it's full of vitamin D. And this is one way to get it. Now, the problem is that it's sunscreens. Now, nature has invented a sunscreen called melanin. And it's melanin that makes the skin dark. Now, this is, some, this is a white person or two people exposed to the sun, or one person, or say two people. So someone's exposed to the sun without sunscreen and this big black area shows the amount of vitamin D produced. Put on sunscreen, you know, the sun creams that we have, put those on and there's no vitamin D produced. And it's the same with natural skin pigmentation the dark skin uh, of people from Africa and people from Asia, that is nature's sunscreen. See, if I were to go to, um, to Africa, I get terribly badly sunburned because I've no natural protection in my skin. But nature's provided its natural sunscreen, melanin, the darkness of the skin, but that's the same as the sunscreen here. What it means is that vitamin, there's very little vitamin D produced. The, the dark pigmented skin will block 85% of the ultraviolet light which reaches the skin and blocks therefore vitamin D production. It's the same in the elderly. That's the mean, by that I mean the elderly of any age, but the white elderly. If we expose a young person to the sun, you get loads of vitamin D produced. Put an old person out in the sun and they hardly produce any vitamin D. And the reason is that when we get old, our skin becomes thin and our skin becomes dry. It's the dryness that's important in the elderly. And the elderly, the dry skin is dry because they are not producing this oil, 7-dehydrocholesterol. They're not producing it. And if there's no oil on the skin, then the sun cannot produce vitamin D. All elderly people are very deficient in vitamin D. It's said it's because they don't go outside. There's nothing to do with going outside. It's because they have very dry skin. All elderly people need a vitamin D supplement by mouth. They're okay if they eat Bangladeshi fish three times a day. Terrific. No problem if you eat Bangladeshi fish three times a day. Wonderful. This is some, some work in Germany. We showed in Germany, this is all the population in, in the northern part of Germany, 80%, 82% had, um, sorry, 88% had vitamin D deficiency. Deficiency. Virtually everybody. It is so common in Northwest Europe. I'll just go back to that one. No, sorry, where have we gone now? Yeah, this is, a, this is really the real normal range. And this is me. My blood level of vitamin D is right up there, right at the top of the range, which is fantastic. Now, this was from Iran. Looking at people, we looked at three groups of people. People with COVID-19, okay, there in that blue triangle. People here were those who died from COVID-19. And these are people who, who didn't have COVID-19. Now we can see of those with COVID-19 who didn't die, the average blood level of vitamin D was 20. Of those who did die, the average blood level was less than 10. That's what I said before. Less than 10, a very high risk of dying from COVID-19. Below 20, a risk of 
being ill from COVID-19. Above 30 is safe and above 40 is ideal. So this is where we need to be. We need to have plenty of vitamin D in our bodies so we don't become ill and we don't die from COVID-19. Study in India, I read a few days ago, are people with mild disease, it says asymptomatic, really people with mild disease, 30% in India who are deficient of vitamin D. Of the ones in India who went to, who, who needed to go into the intensive care unit, 95% were deficient of vitamin D. And that's in India. And you think India is okay. But a lot of Indian people spend the time indoors. And in cities like Delhi, this terrible atmospheric pollution and the atmospheric pollution prevents the vitamin D being produced because it blocks the sunlight. I remember that when I was in Delhi a couple of years, a few years ago. I couldn't believe how the sun was so pale. It's even worse in China. Deficiency in vitamin D is very dangerous. Effectively, when we say people are dying from COVID-19, you're dying because of the deficiency of vitamin D. Because if you've got plenty of vitamin D, you don't die from COVID-19. You only die from COVID-19 if you're deficient. <clears throat> Excuse me. People only die from COVID-19 because of deficiency in vitamin D. He's put down COVID-19 death. It isn't COVID-19 death. It's vitamin C deficiency death. But people don't think like that. <clears throat> Study from America. Here we've got the blood levels again. 40 to 60, the ideal. Perfect. Good range there. Down to 20. No, no below that. And this is the risk of getting vitamin, of getting COVID-19. And the higher the blood level of vitamin D, the lower the chance of getting COVID-19. So when you get to the level that I'm in, up towards 60, the chance of getting vitamin D is, sorry, the chance of getting COVID-19 is very, very low. This is the summer. No, it is, this is 2020 in the UK. And each blue vertical column represents one day. Now, in the UK, we only produce vitamin D on 165 days of the year at noon. And if we go, if we go through the most of the day, it's uh, far less than that. So the, the pandemic started off, here we are, and then when we'd had 258 deaths, we had lockdown. You know what lockdown is. 258 deaths. By the end of the year, we had 100,000 deaths. But on 258, we had lockdown. Didn't do any good. The deaths just went up and up and up to 1,000 a day. And then they started to come down. Why did they come down? Because the sun started to shine. Now, it's not just the sun. It's been a lovely sunny day today here. The temperature has been minus two, but it's still been a lovely sunny day. But it's only when the sun is high in the sky that it's strong enough to produce vitamin D. When your shadow is longer than your height, you will not be making any vitamin D whatsoever. We make no vitamin D whatsoever in the winter, only for 165 days of the year but we make enough to go into store. We have a reserve. Here's Midsummer's Day, mid-June, and now we're living on our reserve. Once the reserve runs out, the vitamin D deaths come up, sorry, the COVID-19 deaths come up again. The reason for this lack of COVID-19 deaths in the summer is the sun and vitamin D. The same thing will happen next year. Here we are, next year, the deaths will drop right down during the course of the, the, the um, early part of the summer. This shows the power and influence of the sun, how important it is. I've shown you that before. Here we have my little heroine girl. 
vitamin D message goes out to the Asian community. This was um, in our local paper earlier in the year. I wrote to the paper, I said, can I join in this campaign? But I received no reply whatsoever. 22 year old Aisha Sidat. There she is. What a delightful girl she must be. And she's so sensible. And therefore, there she's saying, take vitamin D. And good for her. Hope a lot of people listen. She's doing far more good than the doctors have done in this country. And this is another form of vitamin D, um, calcifidiol. And this acts very, very quickly. See, normally, if you give vitamin D, it takes a couple of weeks before it gets above that level of, 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 of 30 into the safe range. But if you give it as calcifidiol, it gets up to that range within two hours. So for people critically ill, this is what they require. And it is amazingly effective. So here we are again. I should see that with a vitamin D. And this is another way of taking it as a spray, a thousand units, a spray, spray it onto the tongue, spray it onto food. It's another way of delivering it. Vitamin D is an oil in capsules, or it can be as a spray like this. Now, one unit of vitamin D is what is required by what a 20 gram mouse. So all it requires, one unit of vitamin D. Now, one unit of vitamin D is 10 billionths of a gram, a tiny, tiny amount. What we require is about this. 3,000 units of vitamin D a day, 20,000 units each week, 100,000 each month. I take the middle one. I take 20,000 units of vitamin D every Sunday, and that's what I've done for the past 25 years or thereabouts. This is the dose that needs to be taken. It is in no way dangerous. Don't let anybody tell you the vitamin D is dangerous. If it took 100,000 units a day, there might be problems. But out of it's only once a month. 3,000 units a day, 20,000 units each week. And this is supplied in my local pharmacy department, pharmacy shop in the village. You take one a week and it's perfect. So 4,000 units is also said to be 100 micrograms. It's best to avoid micrograms. It causes confusion because people think it's 100, mil 100 milligrams. People get mixed up to milligrams and micrograms. So 4,000 units, if, it, if it's taken as milligrams, is 4 million units a, a day, which is far too much. So avoid micrograms. Don't think about micrograms. Just take it as four, 3,000 or 4,000 units a day. There we are. 3,000 units a day. Perfect. It's a long-term supplement. You must take it between September and April. Ideally, all the year round. I take it all the year round. There's no problem because any additional excess vitamin D is deactivated by the sun. We are the sun acting on the skin deactivates excess vitamin D. No problem whatsoever there. Ideally, we should have a blood test every year in the winter. And that's what I do. Here we are again, my hero, Aisha Sidat, wonderful girl, inspirational, and she is doing more good than anyone else. Spread the word, tell your friends all about vitamin D. And that's the end of the presentation. Dr. Grimes, thank you very much for the presentation. It's very informative. That's um, the end of the presentation. Yes, thank you very much. What um, I'm going to just do for a minute, if you wouldn't mind, I just want to share the screen again, just for one Okay, minute. yeah. I want to show you this. 
that not many people really understand. Here is Singapore. See, there's Singapore on the equator. Here is Uganda. Singapore on the equator. Here's India. Here's Delhi. Pakistan. Here's the United Kingdom. We are further north than anywhere in China. People don't realize how far, how close the North Pole, the UK is. We're closer than Mongolia and all of China to the North Pole. We are so far north. India is close to the equator. We are close to the North Pole. Huge difference in the amount of sun that we get in the UK, far, far less than in India and Singapore. It's, it's a summer all the year round in Singapore. But it's a summer for 165 days of the year in England. Okay. I'll yeah, I think, that, I think that visual is really helpful because you don't realize um, just how north we are. And, you know, the stats that you show where the people are not deficient, it's, you know, it's clearly evident that they're more near the equator. Um, so I've got some questions for you. Um, yes. You know, um, how can Asians increase their vitamin D naturally without taking tablets? You said again, sorry. How can Asians increase their vitamin D naturally without taking tablets? Um, they can eat Bangladesh fish three times a day, and that's it. Otherwise, they have to go and live somewhere else where there's more sun. It's as simple as that. It is impossible. It is effectively impossible for anyone to have a good blood level of vitamin D living in England. And okay. it's, it's most certainly, see, I take, I take a vitamin D supplement all the year round. Yeah, I think they say in vin winter that you need to take like at least 4,000 IUs a day um, just to sort of, you know, get the levels that you need to protect your... But yeah, well, I, I take it all the year round. And I, 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 that's, what, that's what I would recommend. I understand what you mean. I said between uh, September round to April, certainly take it. The beginning yeah. of September to the end of April. Okay. Um, it's eight months of the year, but it is it is effectively impossible for a patient of African Asian ethnicity to have adequate vitamin D levels in this country without taking a supplement by mouth. Okay, um, there's some other questions. What are the symptoms of low vitamin D? Um, dying thirty years too young. <laughs> That's the main thing. You die thirty years younger. Than if you had a normal vitamin D. Are there any clinical symptoms you see though? No. Like, and so people can, it, you, you, no, right. you should just get the blood test tested regularly. If your blood level is very, very low, you can get bone problems. But bone problems are very rare. Vitamin D deficiency is very common. There's no way of knowing what your vitamin D level is unless you have a blood test done. Okay, some people are asking about uh, during COVID, how much IU of vitamin D should we take daily? They're asking about vegetarian foods in the diet to increase vitamin D. Um, is it okay to take the vitamin D like weekly or monthly or daily, which is the best way? Um, yeah. And why, why are the BAME community having less vitamin D absorption levels? The vit Vain people absorb the same amount of vitamin D from the stomach as everybody else. They don't make it in the skin because the darkness, the dark color of the skin blocks ultraviolet light. It's like wearing clothes. Clothes block ultraviolet light. They block the sunlight. So it's excess clothing. You know, I, I, I see my neighbors, it's a matter of tradition. I, I, I've heard it said, suggested, white-skinned people have a genetic predisposition to take the clothes off when the sun shines. <laughs> and if you look at society, you probably find out, think that that's true. I do the same myself. So when the sun's shining in the summer, I'm outside in my garden in my shorts. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's a matter of sun exposure. But... There is a problem with vegetarians. 
the only vegetables that contain vitamin D are mushrooms, fungus, mushrooms. I mean, I mean you presumably need to eat quite a lot of those in order yes. to... But the yeah. other thing it's better to take the tablets, isn't it, really? You've got to yeah. eat a lot of mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> you've also got to put them out in the sun because they contain 70, they contain the oil which the sun converts into vitamin D. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, they're asking about liquid forms. Are they better than tablet forms, the vitamin no. D supplements? No, no the, tablet, the tablets are... Um, the tab okay, what about other foods besides fish? that you'd recommend for vitamin D? You said mushrooms. Yeah. Well, you can get oily fish, mackerel, herrings. Mango, Quebec. Quebec. They're okay. The other is way- they, Is it okay to use suntan lotion being Asian? That'll probably stop the vitamin D, wouldn't it? Well, you're already, you, 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 you'll have 85% of your vitamin D production stop anyway, because your inherited skin skin pigmentation. So you, we shouldn't wear any suntan lotion, is Absolutely. that what you're saying? Absolutely okay. not. What's the best in unit in our body? Like levels, I suppose, if that's what they're asking, somebody's asking, what is the best in unit? Well, as I say, it's between 40 and 60. See, the problem is there are two types of units in, in use. There is nanograms per mil between 40 and 60, and nanomoles per litre which is between 100 and 150. Okay. But and do, would you have that with K2? People are asking if you have the vitamin D with K2. Yeah. My photograph of Asia, see that showed a, with a, a bottle of uh, D plus K2. I, don't, I saw that, yeah. She had K2 on there, didn't she? I don't take K2 myself, no. I take the view that vitamin D deficiency in this country is very, very common. I've never heard of vitamin K deficiency. Isn't the K2 that moves the calcium to the right place? That's, that's what someone said. I'm not sure that it's true. Okay. And um, I, I don't worry about that. I, I don't. There's some question about what your thoughts are on genetics, VDR receptor. Oh, that's very rare. I've only ever seen two people with VDR receptor. Question more physically inherited. But um, I've only seen two people. It's very, very rare at all. Don't, don't okay. I've never seen it in um, an Asian person. Okay. There's um, a question about a pharmacist and a GP said not to take high dose, like 20,000 IUs per week, as it would have negative impact on the kidney. They recommend 3,000 daily instead. Yeah, that's what I said, 3,000 daily. Yeah. But said, well, taking 20,000 a week is fine. Yeah. I think I was put on that myself. So. <laughs> Um, is vegan, but I think they said daily is better because it um, gives the chance to absorb that on a daily basis rather than that one well, in one, one, one. The thing is, to run graph rather briefly, it, it takes two weeks for the vitamin D you take down that by mouth to be activated. So right. it takes two weeks. So don't worry about whether you take it once a day or once a week or even once a month. It doesn't really matter. But um, once a day or once a week is fine. Okay, there's quite a lot of questions coming through, so I'm going to try and hurry. Um, it says, um, is vegan vitamin D good enough? I don't, I've never heard of vegan vitamin D. I'm very suspicious of it. Okay. <laughs> the other day, and I think they said it's linseed oil, which is, which is no use at all. Okay. If you are a strict vegetarian, um, a vegan, you've got to use the sun. On right. The sun. You've got to expose a lot of your body to the sun. Whether, whether outside in the garden or on a sunbed is up to you. Okay, there's a question. A doctor asked for vitamin D levels to be tested, but if your yeah. calcium is okay, they won't test for vitamin D? I know. Oh, I know. Crazy. It's terrible. Tell them you want it for testing your immunity. There you go. Calcium. Okay, and, and if they don't test it, then get a private test, I think. Well, you could right. do that, yes. Yeah. You could do that. Um, but you, one is a good quality of vitamin D to buy. Can you recommend anything particular? No, they're all about the same. I think they're all fine. Okay, but liquid ones more than tablets. Yeah, well, the, it's usually as a capsule. But what the tablet is, it's an oil. That's the point. It is okay. an oil. It can be bought as an oil as well. 
Okay. Um, okay, GPs do not test for vitamin D levels due to costs. How do we assess what our levels are other than going private? I mean, uh, look, I showed you what I had done. I checked the blood levels of 1,574 um, South Asian ethnic people and 816, I think it was, white people. There was no cost involved. Yeah, and, and I think, think relatively the cost is minimal compared to what you end up with if you have low yeah, vitamin D. It's nothing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are petitions like to make vitamin D more accessible and stuff. Absolutely. So we, should, we should be signing them. Yeah. yeah. See, Doctors if won't, diabetes, won't. If you have diabetes, you want to have a test to see how it's getting on, don't you? Yeah. They're saying that a lot of doctors are saying no to the vitamin D test. So um, people are asking, like, um, are you. That what, what people need to do as, a, as an Asian community is insist that blood testing for vitamin D is made available to you. We should have a petition then. <laughs> have a petition. Have a petition. Yeah. Take yeah. vitamin and D seriously. Look, I've shown you at the beginning, so many people are dying. People are dying for heaven's sake. Um, what's a death worth? That 44-year-old lady with five children died. Well, you know, we want vitamin D testing done. Yeah. <clears throat> Insist, mobilise local opinion. All of you, mobilise local opinion. Yeah, some people, are, well, this is somebody who's got like um, an immune suppressant, um, so she's saying that she needs to use sunscreen. I don't know much about that. Um, we're and told to use suntan as not to expose to radiation. So that's why people are using sun, sun, sunscreen. But we well, shouldn't be using it, should we? Because melatonin is absolutely got it naturally. So yeah. why would we need to do that? Yeah. Um, if you've got a white skin like me, now I've got a problem that I'm bald. My <laughs> head right up to the sun. I always put sunscreen on my head when I go out. I don't put yeah. the net to the part of my body, only yeah. on my head. Yeah, you're saying stay away from the vegan um, vitamin D, is that right? But I, I'm not saying that. I, I don't know what it is. Please. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I'm very suspicious of it. Are there any vegetarian foods apart from mushrooms to get vitamin D? No. No. no okay. Regarding... Uh... I'll tell you something about vitamin D, which I didn't mention, is where it comes from. It comes from the oil in sheep's wool. Oh, I didn't know that. That's where it's obtained from. Okay. There yeah. is another interesting thing as well. They, they said um, regarding not to use sun lotion, what about skin cancer? But I thought vitamin D helps with like reducing cancer. Yeah. Vitamin, a high blood level of vitamin D is protective against melanoma. Okay. Is it okay to take um, once a month 60K dose? I mean, you've recommended daily, haven't you? Really? Uh, that's okay, but I, I do. I'd prefer it to be 20,000 units. Yeah. Would a daily dose of uh, 5,000 IUs be harmful? No, that's okay. Okay. Many people died of COVID-19 due to, yeah. A lot of people are saying thank you for the lovely presentation. It's been very informative. Um, when, when should... I'm very glad to hear. They're saying when should you take the vitamin D um, for maximum absorption in the body? And also, like, do you have to eat it with food? I don't think it matters, quite honestly. Okay. Mostly. Well, I, I take mine before breakfast, honestly. I thought somebody said have it with oil, like a fatty, fat, something with doesn't fat, because it's fat soluble, is it? Doesn't matter? Okay. Well, I always have milk with my breakfast cereal. So okay. Indeed. And then I go and have my breakfast about half an hour later. So is, is that's okay. Yeah, I think you've covered the strength. I, ha I have been taking vitamin D three, three courses of six weeks. My D level is now is 13 how to increase 13 is quite low isn't it it is very low yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i think it. she has to you have to continue chetna absolutely um, make sure she's got a good dose yeah it's a higher dose really you could, like, you probably try to give her 400 units a day but okay. that's that's hopeless yeah yeah you need like three four thousand don't you? Yeah. and okay. don't don't get them from the doctor because the doctor would give her still a silly little dose. Okay. Get them from the pharmacist and okay. get a good dose in the pharmacy. And the cost of it is okay. 10 pounds per year. Wow. I joke not, it's as cheap as that. 
10 pounds per year. That's okay. all it costs. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, do you need to take vitamin C to absorb vitamin D? No. Okay. Take what's vitamin it? C if you want to do it, yeah. I mean, they're asking, like, uh, what's the reason why BAME people have less vitamin D absorption? They don't have less absorption. They have less production of it in the skin. Okay. They can absorb it just like anybody else in tablet is, is it because of the darker skin? Purely because of the darker skin okay. and also wearing a lot of clothes. Okay. Severe osteoporosis, um, does one need um, 4,000 IU or more? They're just the same. With us, okay, nothing, nothing. Else. Is a fish oil a good substitute? Fish oil, yeah, fish yes. oil. It is. Okay. So I'm just saying, vegetarian margarine contains vitamin D um, and E, but I, I certainly wouldn't recommend margarine because margarine's got the oils which are not very good. For well, you. I know, but if people, they should be having butter, butter, block butter. But if they are vegan, you would take butter, so they take margarine. Which is dreadful. Yes, bad. margarines are not very good. You have to have no. water. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not a great enthusiast of vegan a diet. Quite, I think it can be harmful. Yeah, okay. Um, does it depend on your age regarding how many units um, of vitamin D is taken a day? I thought it's by weight. You do by weight? Like it is, our, it, it is, it, is it 200 I use by how many kilograms you are? But you, you've got to work out from the, from the weight of a mouse. <laughs> one unit for a 10 gram mouse so it means a 60 kilogram person is 6,000 units okay somebody's asking is oral spray spray better than capsules um no well capsules are fine capsules are best okay yeah. what the spray. vitamin d blood test is important to ask for d3 just just ask for a vitamin d blood test and say okay. is it, I, i'm doing it to check my immunity I say, what you want to do is say, go to the doctor and say, look, I am told on good authority that the reason for a lot of BAME deaths, women deaths, is because they are seriously deficient in vitamin D. Could you please it, my vitamin D level? And you said the test only costs 10 pounds, isn't it? Well, the, the, uh, the test is actually costs less than that. Well, okay, there you go. It's the, it's the treatment for a year that costs ten pounds. So the main message is get your vitamin D tested and make sure you take the supplements throughout yeah. the year. As a group, as a society, in the town. Yeah. Make sure your collective voice is heard. You as an individual. Maybe we need to get you to help us write a petition. I'd love to do that. Okay, I'm I'm happy to take that on. Whereabouts do you live, Divina? I I live in um, Stockport. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll speak to you. I'll, I'll give you a call after. Yeah, There's right. 88 new messages. I can't keep up. <laughs> There's so yeah. many questions. I mean... You need to be walking, honestly. You need to walk around with placards saying, take vitamin D. Yeah. Placards. Everyone keeps saying, what well, are you? They're yes. saying fantastic presentation. They're saying if you have vitamin D with other diabetic tablets. Yes, you can. No problem. Yeah. And um, it is very good for diabetes as well. Yeah, why don't they give injections anymore? Of vitamin D? Yeah, that's well, a good question. Rather have an injection or take a tablet. I'd, just, I'd rather have a tablet. <laughs> I don't have that tablet. So, you know, if people, if people want an injection... If they're they saying, taking it once a year in the form of an injection, they I do know. that in India. They said they do that in India. Yeah, it's, it's not a very good idea, actually, once a year. You, 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 I know it's done. It, it's possible. It yeah. should be more than every three months, anyway. Yeah, somebody said they've got um, suffer with ibuprofen painkiller. Um, can they take vitamin D instead? Yeah, well, I can take it as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, doctor said 50,000 soft caps capsules. Is that too much? Fifty thousand. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a month's dose, basically, isn't it? Hundred thousand a month. Yeah. Fifty thousand is a, is a big tablet size capsule size. If you got 50,000 capsules, it take two a month. I think some people are saying they've paid £10 for like um, four months of um, testing. Yeah, I pay £10 for year's supply. Yeah, somebody's still confused. You're told to use suntan lotion to prevent skin cancer. But we're saying that our skin lotion, we don't need it because of our brown skin. That's right. That's correct, isn't it? If a patient asks why they need vitamin 
does vitamin D help? If a patient asks why they need it, what does vitamin D help with? Immunity. Immunity, yeah. Fighting infection. It's against there you the go. Um, creel um, oil. Somebody's saying creel oil. Is that any good? What oil? Sorry. Creel oil. So it's like a, a sort of stronger fish oil, I think. I don't know. Shark fish. oil. It's shark oil, isn't it? Shark oil. Yeah, creel. Creel, I think, comes from sharks. Yeah, yeah. No, Is there any particular brand um, or company name with the vitamin D? Yeah, they're, the same. they're all the same. Okay. Um, from what age should children start taking vitamin D? Well, the child should start taking vitamin D before it is born. Okay. The most important time for a baby to receive vitamin D is while it's inside its mother. During the, every, every, every pregnant woman babe, should have a blood vitamin D level check in pregnancy. In yeah. pregnancy. No it's, baby should be born deficient in vitamin D. So really everyone should be taking it. Yeah. And if you've got plenty of vitamin D in pregnancy, the baby's fine until it's five. And then it can take a thousand units a day until it's 15. And then it can start on 3000 a day. If we have 120 in the blood test, is that good? I'm That's excellent, it's, yeah. Is that excellent, okay. Mine's 150 on that level of testing. Yeah. Okay. Excellent, um, perfect. Is, uh, they're asking what vitamin D do you take? I don't, I can't remember the name on the, just vitamin D. It just says vitamin D on the, on the bottle. I, I okay. get brands. Maybe you could send me a print screen and then I'll send it to everyone. Yeah. Um, what is the dose for a child of 13? Um, which mushroom is good in vitamin D? A child of 13 yeah. is almost as big as its mother. Isn't it? So yeah, you should be yeah, taking adult doses then. It's half the adult size, right. at the age of four. So a child of 13 um, is, is, is basically an adult, but we shouldn't worry about teenagers too much. They should be outside. Now, is somebody saying, um, did you say that um, the vitamin D tablets you take cost about 10 pounds a year? 10 pounds a year, yes. Okay, then we definitely want to know which ones you take, because <laughs> that's really good. I get, I get. I've, I've always had them from Amazon. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get the details and I'll post it to everyone. Um, loads of them on Amazon. Yeah. The same. Ten pounds a year. That's amazing. Ten pounds a year. Yeah. yeah. They said thank you very much. It's an excellent presentation. Um, as a GP, um, I still prescribe if to all elderly and they remain well. Most people need to do vitamin tests. Other doctors tell me off when I prescribe vitamin D or request blood tests, but I tell them. Um, of your research, of your research, which is yeah. brilliant. Um, your research is brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. women to women as well. Everyone's saying thank yeah. you. Pregnancy and vitamin D, yes, doctors advise against it. I, I've not, I don't know. Pregnancy and vitamin D, doctors advise against it. Yeah. Are they? I'm not sure. I'm not. Is it, um, the best thing you can do, though, from this is go out. At the weekend, get your placards out, your protest going, and you want to walk around the Stockport or wherever you live and walk around as a group saying, vitamin D awareness, take vitamin D, test vitamin D. You must be doing that all the time. You can't go in big groups at the moment, but in little groups. Yeah. But you've got, you've got to act collectively. Yeah, I think if we do, then that, that's a good way to get the message heard. Without doing that, it's very difficult yeah. to get the message heard. No one is taking any notice. And these poor women, that I can't, you know, this poor woman, 44-year-old, a fifth, fifth child is born, and then she dies from COVID-19. And, the, and the, someone said to me, another ethnic minority person said, well, it was because she wasn't socially distancing. He was blaming her for getting the coat for dying. It was her fault. <laughs> in your social distance when you got five little children in an extended yeah. family. But it wasn't her fault. It was nothing to do with social distancing. It's because she was short of the 
and nobody bothered checking for it. Yeah. Um, somebody's saying calcium, magnesium, zinc, and vitamin D complex. Is that good? Uh, don't, don't worry about that. Okay. And they said, what's the difference between vitamin D3 and D? Well, D3 comes from animal sources and D2 comes from mushrooms. Okay. But D2 isn't as good as D3. Just go for D2. Unless you're a vegan, then go for D2. Otherwise, D3. Yeah, this is the saying. Um, trust At what rule. strength? What strength should we be taking? About the same. About the same. Yeah, yeah about the same. About 3,000 units a day. Yeah, they're saying that a lot of trust trusts of the rules so that people don't heal naturally um, because they want to push the meds. Um, you could, it, because sorry? it is D2, you could take 5,000 a day. Okay. D3, 3,000 a day. Somebody said grounded vitamin D3, one year supply, maximum thread, 199 on Amazon. Yeah. That's pretty good, isn't it? 999. Absolutely. Yeah, that's why I meant 999, not 199. <laughs> Um, why do travel insurance people want to know why you're taking vitamin D? I They're saying, why do the travel insurance people want to know if you're taking vitamin D? Well, I think everyone should take it. If, if, I, were living, if I were living in India, I wouldn't bother. But if yeah. I'm living here, I will do. Yeah. I live near the North Pole. <laughs> Next door to the North Pole. Ella says um, that she's prescribed calcium with vitamin D. Is that sufficient? No, don't. That's not a good idea. Why is that not a good idea? If people, you mentioned about the kidneys, and if people take too much vitamin D, they get too much calcium in the kidneys. You shouldn't have the calcium with the D, you should you? Take, if you don't take calcium, then the vitamin D is safe. It indeed becomes a problem if it's taken with calcium. I'm taking okay. calcium with dreadful, it's horrible stuff to take. Forget yeah. calcium. I think you get that naturally in foods anyway. You can get it in foods. Yeah. The only ones you don't can't get enough of is the vitamin D and things like B12. Yeah, that's exactly. um, yeah. Yeah. I think um, David. Yeah. yeah. David, which mushrooms are good in vitamin D? Because there are so many different kinds of mushrooms you're talking about. I've so no which idea. particular ones you think? I've no idea. I've never bothered with it very much. There are a lot of different mushrooms, fungi. I think the main message is that you're not going to get the amount you need in foods. You have to have yeah. supplements. But if you yeah. do get mushrooms, yeah. leave them out in the sun. <laughs> in the okay. snow, you mean? They're, they're <laughs> sunny, yeah. Leave them in the sun. Snow. <laughs> it's got to be outside, not, not through glass. You, <laughs> yeah, through the you glass. Want, you want sunburn okay. mushrooms. Okay. Okay. Since we've got so many oh my questions God, this, still... Yeah coming in, what, uh, what we'll do, David, um, Davina and myself will get the, all the questions together and send it to you via email oh, and God. get the answers from you and we'll put it in our health group, okay. with, which I, we've got. I think I, we've got. I think we've got a really good advocate here to help us in our community um, you know, to try and raise the profile of vitamin D, so we should actually yeah. use David's Dr. Um, Grimes' is, um, yeah. experience and see if we can get some sort of petition going. If you can yeah, definitely. contact with this girl, um, what she calls Sidat. I've forgotten her name now. Sorry, what's that? The, the girl who's Cedat. campaigning locally. I'll send you a link to her. Yeah, if you send me a link, I'll, we, we can try and get in touch with her. Contact. Yeah. I'll send you a link to her, the Davina. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Grimes. It was really, really informative. Thank you very much for your time and all the effort you've done to make this lovely presentation. Speak out, speak out, shout out. <laughs> I think with your help, we can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm up for absolutely. it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. definitely. Well, all okay. the very, very best to you. Thank you very much. Okay. All the best. Thank you very Thanks. much, Dr. Grimes. Um, really appreciate you coming. and. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for attending our session. Um, a special thank you to Devina to help out and uh, Dr. Grimes. We will next be holding vitamin B seminar. So look out for that space soon. And then following vitamin C. So hopefully 
Dr. Grime will help us there as well, if possible. <laughs> but <laughs> we grab him everywhere. Yeah. But we've got other doctors included. So please look up for space um, for vitamin B and then. I think the C one's next, um, Panaben. Is it C? Yeah, vitamin C is next. C. Yeah, C is next week. C is next week. So look yeah. up for that. It's next week, Tuesday. And yeah. we also got, um, well, I, you know, at the entrance, where well, at the beginning of the seminar, I was listening to everybody asking for phone numbers for yoga. We do yoga with uh, Nina Ben every Saturday. Thank morning. you, Dr. Grimes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we do yoga every Saturday. So if you are keen on uh, joining us, let us know. You've got my number and I'll um, put you in our groups. Thank you very much again. Um, what can I say, but it was a good crowd and I really appreciate for you all to join in. And I hope you've learned something. I certainly have learned something with vitamin D. And The main I'm thing is don't rely on the food source. You're, you're yes. going to need to supplement. You know, and it's, you know, throughout the year, he's actually saying so to protect ourselves, especially in this current climate, it's really important to make sure you take your supplements. Yeah, absolutely. OK, we shall look forward to seeing you on Tuesday again next week. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Everyone. Good Thank you, everyone. Good night. Bandha, Bandha, will you. you save the chat? Yes. OK, brilliant. Thank you. People want to come in when we're oh. leaving. <laughs> I think somebody's raised their hand. I don't know what to do with that. Are they asking a question? Or? I think so. Okay, I, so. I did mention to them to write. Yeah, so it's, it's difficult. Look, there's so many questions here. Look, I know. So we'll have to reply them in our groups. Yeah, I think a lot of them, like they're asking about doses and things like that. So we've kind of said what the dose is, but what we can do is like summarize that into like a sheet or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll send them to you. Great. Thank you. As soon as we finish. Thank you again. Great. Thanks a lot. Good Bye. night, all. Thank Bye. you. Don't forget to save the chat. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Bye. Jessica's now. Thanks. Jessica's now.